key to decorating and achieving great results without completely breaking the bank is to understand when to save and when to splurge. In this video, I'll take you through some areas where you can really save some big money and still get a great result. And just to be clear, when I say splurge, I don't mean spending like tons of money, but more like don't go for the very cheapest option. Take it up one or two levels from the bottom of the barrel. Okay, let's dive in. Number one, rugs. So rugs can get pricey fast. Large vintage rugs can easily run up into the tens of thousands of dollars. Some of the things that can make a rug expensive are its age, if it's hand knotted, and if it's made out of high quality natural materials like wool or silk. And less expensive rugs are typically made out of cheaper materials, often synthetic, and are either machine made or hand tufted, which is much less labor intensive than hand knotted. For example, a hand knotted rug may take over a year to complete, while a similar kind of hand tufted rug can be created in just one day. Unless you're like a rug connoisseur or a collector, I would recommend saving on your rugs and going for something machine made or hand tufted. The vintage rug look has been trending for a long time now, so if you're into that look, luckily it's possible to find several beautiful rug options that are mass produced and much more affordable without having to splurge on the real deal. Another affordable rug option that pretty much always looks good is a classic jute rug. Its warmth and texture can instantly elevate any space and you can usually find them at very reasonable prices price points, even in the larger sizes. I'll link some of my favorite affordable rug options down below. Raise your hand if you've ever moved into a new place, slapped up some random old curtains, and never thought about them again. Yep, we have all been there. Or is that just me? I'm always looking to save money wherever I can, but curtains is one of those things where it's very hard to achieve a great result on a shoestring budget. Cheaper curtains that are purchased off the shelf tend to fall short in both width and length, literally, 99% of the time. You will 100% need panels that are wider and longer than you think you need. That obviously means more fabric, which costs more. And I really do recommend getting your curtains hemmed by someone experienced because if you screw it up, well, you just ruined a brand new set of curtains, which can be an expensive mistake. So yeah, these things add up, but these are the details that make the curtains look good. And it's hard to find this on a budget. Finding affordable, nice quality curtains that are the correct size for your window that don't look flimsy and cheap is pretty much impossible. Trust me, I've tried many times. Good quality curtains should have weight and a nice drape to them. And you'll probably want them to be lined as well, unless you're using shears or semi-shears. And definitely, definitely, they need to be wide enough and long enough for your window. If you're feeling motivated to up your curtain game, then definitely check out my video on how to hang curtains. It's helped a lot of people, so it's one that I do recommend. Flooring. Please, please do not try to cut costs on your flooring. Laminate is fine, but if you buy the very cheapest laminate flooring, you spill one glass of water on it and your floor ends up looking like this. Your dog has an accident once and your floor is ruined. Opt for high quality waterproof laminate, luxury vinyl planks, engineered hardwood, whatever your preference is, but do not skimp on the quality of your flooring. Throw pillows. If you're a decor addict like me, then you know that swapping out your pillows is like changing your underwear. You've gotta do it often. And even if you already have a pile of throw pillows in every color of the rainbow, it's never enough. There's always room for more. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that you need to spend a fortune on throw pillows. Sure, the fancy stores will try to convince you that you need to drop 100 bucks on a single pillow, but that's bananas. If I needed to drop 100 bucks on every throw pillow I buy, well, I mean, either I wouldn't have any throw pillows or I wouldn't have any money. When it comes to throw pillows, there is absolutely no need to break the bank. You can find tons of beautiful, affordable options at places like Home Goods or Ikea, or if you know how to sew in a straight line, you can also just make your own. Countertops. So in case you haven't been counter shopping lately, let me tell you that the least expensive kind you can get is laminate. Now I totally get if you're on a tight budget and you wanna save money, but one of the things I feel most strongly about is not skimping on the material of your countertops. If you need to, save somewhere else, but do not skimp on the counters. You don't need to buy the most extravagant piece of Italian marble, but consider splurging on a material that is a step up from laminate, like a quartz 
or some other kind of engineered stone that mimics the look of natural stone without all the drawbacks, maintenance, and the cost of natural stone. A better quality counter will last you years, but it's also really good for resale. Nobody's ever walked into an open house, seen a quartz counter and thought, man, I really wish they'd gone for the bargain bin laminate counters instead of the quartz. Do yourself a favor and get the quality counters. Your future self will thank you. Art. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You don't need to spend tons of money on expensive art to have artwork in your home, unless you're rich. There are so many ways you can get great art, but still save a ton of money, like shopping at thrift stores, flea markets, eBay, Etsy. And of course, you can still support artists by buying their prints instead of having to buy their original artwork. When it comes to saving or splurging on artwork, it's a personal decision that depends on your individual circumstances and priorities. I absolutely love original art and supporting artists, but something's gotta give when you're on a budget. So personally, I would not suggest spending your money on expensive artwork if you're already on a budget and you're looking for places where you can save. Frames. Good thing you saved a bunch of money on the artwork you bought because now you need to buy frames to hang it all in. Beautiful frames have the power to transform your artwork from average to stunning. But the thing is, if you want a frame that kind of goes beyond the standard IKEA frame, then things start to get pricey fast. Back in the day, I used to work in a framing store where I learned all about the expensive art of custom framing. And let me tell you, it's not cheap. But luckily, I discovered a trick to save money on frames. Don't do custom framing. Instead, hit up your local thrift stores or scour clearance sections for cheaper pre-made frames. I found this frame at my local thrift store a couple of weeks ago, frame and painting included, for $5. So just to give you an idea of what you can find sometimes if you get lucky. If you find a frame with potential but it's not quite the right color, get creative with some paint or some rub and buff. If your artwork needs a mat, just get a custom mat cut to size to match your existing frame. Doing this is a much cheaper alternative to custom framing. Now, if you have a valuable piece like an original watercolor or something that's really special to you, then it's worth splurging on glass that has UV protection. You can have that custom cut as well, and that'll help protect your artwork from fading over time, um, and that's important to do if you have a piece that you want to preserve for a long time. Paint. Picking a paint color is hard, okay? It just really is. There's endless color options, and when you finally do pick a color, it always looks completely different on the wall than you expected it to. Paint colors can clash with your existing finishes. They can have unexpected undertones. It's chaos. I mean, maybe you have a natural knack for picking paint and that's great, but generally for most people, choosing the perfect paint color is difficult. So one way to eliminate 90% of the overwhelm when it comes to choosing paints is to look at your favorite designers. Find out what colors they turn to over and over or what colors they used in a project of theirs that you really loved and try sampling those same colors. So what does this have to do with saving or splurging? Well, the tricky part about basing your color choices off of what designers are using is that designers use designer paints. And so they reference designer paint colors. And designer paint adds up very quickly. So this is where I recommend you save your money. Don't buy designer paint. Get it color matched with a cheaper brand of paint. Don't get the very cheapest, you'll regret that, but go with like a solid mid-range paint. You can color match at any Home Depot, just ask them at the paint desk. I'm not gonna get into details about paint quality or the accuracy of color matching. I will leave that debate to the comment section. All I'm saying is 99% of the time, I would recommend you save your money and skip the designer paints. It will save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for an identical or near identical result. The other way I recommend you save on your paint is of course by painting yourself. It really isn't that hard and you'll save a ton of money. And lastly, let's talk sofas. Every home has at least one, so we've got to address this piece of furniture. If you're renting, I'd suggest not going crazy on a pricey sofa, especially if you're renting a place and you're planning on being there less than three years. Who knows what your next place will look like or if your expensive sofa will even fit there. <laughs> if you're in your forever home, then it's another story. Then it's time to treat yourself to that fancy sofa that you've been eyeing. Since you won't be hauling it around in moving trucks, you don't have to worry about damaging it. So go ahead and invest in something that's super comfy and made out of high quality materials like performance fabric. Another scenario where I'd recommend saving on your sofa is if you own a vacation home and you're furnishing it. 
A sofa in a vacation home isn't likely going to get as much wear and tear as an everyday sofa would, so you can get something that looks nice but isn't super expensive and it should still last you a long time. There are a lot of decisions that need to be made when it comes to decorating and most of those decisions involve money. If you're feeling confused about whether to save or to splurge, then always ask yourself these questions. How much use is this particular item going to get? If it's going to get lots of use, then it may be worth spending more on something that's going to be durable. A higher quality item will be more expensive initially, but it can save you money in the long run if it lasts longer. Who will be using it? Will your kids be using it? How old are they? Will pets have access to it? How temporary is your current living situation? And will whatever you're buying now fit where you might go next? Hard to say, right? But a nice antique side table or a beautiful light fixture will probably be easier to fit into a new home rather than a large piece of furniture that is very layout dependent. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.